I threw the back shoulder, give it to me again. And Jordan Love making the adjustment to that big-bodied receiver. I call Romeo Dobbs the finisher right now mm. down in the red zone. So that was really impressive to watch against the New Orleans defense that is fantastic saying, hey, how do we got to make this happen right now? Attack the inside or attack the slots with those young players. He's going to see a very similar defense tonight in Detroit. Yeah, you got Dobbs. Christian Watson coming back now, healthy, Dude. getting in the mix. You talk about the tight end, who's a, a really Luke good Musgrave. young player for them. Really good. So, I mean, this is a Green Bay team. We talked a lot about Detroit earlier this morning, and I think that we all echo Kimberly's point. This is their chance. They did it on that opening Thursday night against Kansas City. Tonight is their chance to prove they're the team to beat in the division. How about the Packers side of this? What are you looking at from the Green Bay side, particularly from the young quarterback? That defense. Well, I'm going to go defense. Go the defense. I'm going to go the defense side That's of the ball, good. right? Because we understand and know the physicality of the Detroit Lions, right? But can that defense live up to the point? They did a great job in the second half limiting the New Orleans Saints to zero points and mm -hmm. giving that team a chance in Jordan Love offensively to come back and win mm -hmm. that game. But when you know a team is going to come out and be physical as a defense and they have eight first-round draft picks on that side of the ball, mm -hmm. can you stop the Detroit Lions from doing what they want to do? I think with Jordan Love, through three games, he has seven touchdowns. Uh, and he's done that without Christian Watson. A lot of his, his receivers and his weapons have been hurt. I think he's shown poise. Like you guys were saying, he has shown that this moment is not too big for him. And I love that. I love that because I, I was not – I was I was worried about how he would do to start out. Mm -hmm. You have the Aaron Rodgers, like, legend. You got the, is he going to be the guy? And so far he's shown that, yeah, I've been sitting on the bench, but I've been learning a few things. Now the question is injuries coming into this game. How will he be able to compensate? I think a big play in that game last week versus New Orleans where when they were trying to come back on the field goal drive. And he threw it up to his receiver and gave him a chance, yeah. and he got a PI call. Yeah, yeah. Right? That lets me know that Jordan Love isn't scared to right. give his receivers an opportunity. And you believe that only a few things are going to happen. Either it's going to be incomplete, your, your guy's going to catch it, or he's going to get PI. Yeah. And that's the confidence that he's playing with right yeah. now. Final word. So for Green Bay tonight, they're going to have to stop the most diverse run game in the NFL. Not mm -hmm. only physical, Harry, but Detroit's run game. They have more mm -hmm. types of runs than anybody in the league. Rashawn Gary's going to have to play huge. Against that defense, I think Musgrave, you kind of brought him up, is a huge storyline tonight because of his vertical speed and his separation speed. Jordan Love has gotten to the, the point rapport-wise with him that he, he really trusts his body language, and I think that's a big deal versus a defense that's going to play a lot of, like, match coverage. Ball's got to come out of your hands quickly. Also, if you talk to anyone on the Detroit offensive staff, will you get them to give the ball to Jameer Gibbs, asking for a friend? A friend with a fantasy right. angle? Yes. All right. well, I mean, but, 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 it's supposed to be spectacular. Give them the ball. Yeah, I mean, they're 2-1. and one. They're a good football team. I understand that, but I'm not. <laughs> I could use a little Jameer Gibbs. Have the lethal combination of extraordinary speed in so many different places, a quarterback whose superpower, as it was said here yesterday, is his accuracy, yep. and like a mad scientist, genius, offensive-minded coach who's drawing up stuff that even the average fan like me can see is spectacular. Talk to me about this offense. This, what are we seeing? This offense is in many ways the Kansas City Chiefs with Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes. And allow me to nerd out here, okay? So I want everyone to kind of envision like an accordion, okay? Mm -hmm. Take the accordion and expand it fully. Okay. That's what before the snap ever happens, defenses have to do mm. because of the vertical speed and the fear of it with Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. So if you watch, safeties start 15 to 17 yards downfield. Mm. Now that's three levels to a defense. That's the top level. The bottom level is the defensive line. The second level are those linebackers. That's why we see all these motions and shifts and whatnot because they are putting the second level of a defense in absolute blenders. Those guys have to see motions. They have to see jet sweeps. They have to see ball fakes with Tua turning his back to the defense. And what happens is safeties are at 15 yards. Linebackers are at 10, let's call them five yards. So there's a 10-yard gap. The ball gets snapped. They see all those things. All of a sudden, that 10-yard gap goes to 20. And then now a defense, that's why you get these voids. In many ways, like, they, what this offense does is it on every single play breaks the rules of your defense. Mike McDaniels, Mike, excuse me, Mike McDaniel calls plays the way defensive coaches fear you're going to. Mm. The defensive coaches, and, and a lot of people know this when you're around football, rules, defenses have rules. And when you constantly break those rules, you're now forcing the defense to play almost an impossible way. That's one of the reasons why. And that's what Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid do. And that's one of the reasons why this offense is the best in the NFL right now.
And I would say this, looking at this offense last year, right, I was a little disappointed. Disappointed because they weren't consistent in the run game, especially when Mike McDaniel had came from San Francisco, and that was his M.O. But this is year two in that offense. And I always say in a Kyle Shanahan offense, be careful of them in year two. Right. Because that's when they really start to ascend. But the commitment to the run game yeah. takes this offense to another level. And it's unlocking a lot of things for Tua. And it's also protecting Tua on top of McDaniel's understanding, McDaniel understanding that, hey, I got to protect my quarterback and get this football out of the They attack the second level of the exactly. defense in the run game as yep. well. And here's why I think this is the best game or the biggest game <laughs> of the weekend. Because as the Jets have fallen by the wayside with the injury to the quarterback and the Patriots are good, but they're not great. These are the two teams that are going to be battling it out, we would assume, for this incredibly competitive division. And Kmart, and you were right. You were quite hard on Josh Allen going into that opening game. And then, of course, he played a terrible game and gave one away in the opener. Since then, he has been sensational. This is a fascinating matchup for both quarterbacks. Yeah, I think, you know, had Tua not gotten hurt last year, I do wonder what, what the Dolphins' season would have been like. Mm -hmm. um, but the Bills have been on the precipice of potentially winning a Super Bowl for several years. They have, they have the roster, they have the quarterback. But covering that, covered them in week two with, with the, against the Raiders. And talking to Sean McDermott after the game, like he's talking about the importance of them understanding how to win. You have to be humble. You have to, um, sometimes you, just because you can doesn't mean you do. And the focus for Josh Allen is to be smart. It has been drilled in his head. But here's my pushback. He's like Samson. Like, what makes him great is that hair. It, it's, it's the running ability. It's his, his, his attitude of, of playing the game like a linebacker and running back and all that, and then the arm. You don't want to cut that off. You want to exploit that, but you also want to be smart about it. So I'm fascinated because he needs to score points. He better, be, he better be Samson this week. He better be Superman. The cape goes on. You got to score 35 to beat the Dolphins. You are not going to beat the Dolphins by ball control or running the football. You have to score 35. Week one, I was very critical of them because I said grow up. Because there was a style that you had to play to beat the Jets. That style will not work. This is a game that Josh is going to go have to play some, make some of those plays where we go, no, 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 no. Yes. yes. Yeah. No, no, no. He's got to put on that's, the cape. That's the Allen roller coaster, and, yeah. And, and that's in many ways, like when, they, when this team would play the Chiefs, that's what the, the method yeah. was, that Josh is going to have to go play some Superman yep. hero ball. And it's the same way. The Chiefs' offense averages 27.9 under Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes. Tua and Mike McDaniel, 27-2. It's the same blueprint. Play action pass, and Josh has got to have special, special moments. If he has a big week and they win that game, he puts himself right in the MVP conversation. Oh, right sure. now it's Tua. You're not going to win this game 17-13. to 13. That's not on the list of options. Sure. Let the kid rip it. they got to stop handcuffing him, and, and they got to stop babying him. This, this is a pivotal 14-day stretch. They've done it a certain way where they're telling Zach Wilson, you know, value the football, protect the football, be good on third down, and then let, let our defense try to keep us in it. It's not working. And if you're the Jets, what has to happen is you go to Zach Wilson and say, trust your eyes and trust your instincts. And you got to go. Guys, last week after the game, he told Bob Oshusen, my job is to protect the football and then try to make a play on third down. That is a loser football mentality. Zach Wilson is capable of making plays. He just has to have someone empower him to not be fearful of the consequence, to not be fearful of making mistakes. And there's two things that have to happen. The defense needs to go into Robert Sala's offense, office and say, tell the kid to cut it loose. And if it makes a mistake, we'll clean it up. We're that dominant of a defense. And then the offensive coaches need to design plays and tell Zach Wilson, throw it to the first guy. Throw it to number one. And if it's a pick, we designed a bad play. And we'll get it better. And Zach Wilson just needs to trust his – because what's happening right now is he's so scared to make mistakes that it's hurting every aspect of the football team. The defense never gets to dictate the flow of the football game. The defense never gets a lead. That pass rush that is vaunted never gets to hunt because teams just catch and throw against them because they know as long as they don't turn it over, they cannot lose the football game. And that is not working for the New York Jets. They got to cut the handcuffs off the kid. I'm not saying reckless. I'm not saying stupid. Let's be aggressive. Let's be aggressive and let the kid think he can get completions. Well, I think you have to exalt all possibilities because the way you've done it the first two games with Zach Wilson as a starting quarterback starting out, it hasn't worked, right? You lost the last two. So let them rip it. Let them throw it. Let them figure it out. And then those two, two throws that we talked about earlier, man, when it came to cover two. Right. Right? And Zach Wilson, right here, we're about to show this. 
Zach Wilson going immediately to the check, immediately to the check down, and not even looking at the wide receiver down the sideline. Right. Versus a too high safety, right? When the safety has one half of the football field yep. in that corner. Uh, is, is underneath playing the flat, but you try to fit it in between those two guys in the honey hole. Yeah. That, that's a throw that should be made routinely from quarterbacks. That's baseline one-on-one. -on -one, no doubt. Especially when you have a lot of feel to work with. The, the psychological piece of this <laughs> yeah. is the most important piece yes. of this, and Kmart knows it backwards and forwards. That's his issue. It's not about talent. Zach Wilson has a ton of skills. Um, but what's interesting, uh, in, in fairness to Zach Wilson, he was not supposed to be on the field this year. We were not supposed to be seeing him on the field. They were not anticipating him being on the field. So as much as we want to want to kill this kid for for not playing well, this was supposed to be a slow process of like, okay, he's going to sit and watch. Now that process is gone. It has accelerated yet again. So the psychology of that, I understand. Like Dan is talking about, the defense needs to go into Robert Sala's office office and say, hey, let the kid make mistakes. Robert Sala should be telling his defense. It's on us. You guys make the play. Like, like it should be coming from the, the staff, like that, that confidence of, hey, we thought we'd be eagles flying around and the crows would be pecking. Well, now we're the crows and we're going after the chiefs. Like that aggressive. Well, that's why I'm not letting Nathaniel Haggard off the hook, right? And I don't want to hear anybody else tell me about, okay, he, he doesn't know Zach Wilson. Why doesn't he know Zach Wilson? Yeah. He, well. Isn't he coaching Zach Wilson? Yeah. Isn't he the offensive yes. coordinator? Yeah. So I, I don't want to hear that from anybody else because your job as a play caller is to make sure you know all your people. And when Aaron Rodgers went down, you should not be leaving that facility.